This sermon is brought to you by Shofar Christian Church. We hope that you will be blessed by this message. Our audio and video sermons are also available on Shofar TV to download and share. So before we start, I, I just want to um, affirm... I want to just affirm two things. The, the one is, God sees you. He sees you and He loves you. God sees you and He loves you. He's not holding back. Um, on the 28th of April, we, we started on a very specific journey on walking with God. And um, if you want to see the overview again of where all of this started, then, then that, that was the day. But since then, we've been speaking about so many different aspects of walking with God. And we've had so many people up here sharing, which was just so amazing to hear from so many different spaces. And um, when, I, when I prayed about this week, I, I felt to speak about being maintained, continually filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a scripture in, in Ephesians 5 verse 18, which says, be filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit. But that be filled is, is, a, is a continually being filled. It's a frequently being filled. It's, it's not a thing that happened once and then it's done and it's finished and, and you have to almost work on that tank of, of filling and, and then, you know, um, kind of outlast whatever is happening in your life and trusting that it, will, that it will last until the end of life. This is a continual, maintaining, full type of, type of relationship with God. Now you might look at, at the screen there and see the title for today is speaking into the void and wonder but what, does, what does this have to do with, with what's going on? And, and I want to share something of my journey with you during this week. Um, in preparation for today and maybe that would make sense to some of you because I've, I've interceded so much for this church family during this week that um, I'm actually happy to preach today because I'm trusting that God will bring the breakthrough that he's been working this whole week. Um, I've, been, I've been praying this week especially against various spirits ministering to this church family and maybe some of it might make sense to you. I've prayed specifically against a spirit of accusation. With everyone I spoke to during this week, at some or other stage, some people said, I feel so accused, I feel I'm not worthy, I feel I'm not good enough, I feel I'm not making it, I feel I should be better, I feel I should know more, I feel I should be more equipped, I feel I should be more aligned with God by this stage, and just so many accusations happening. I felt to pray against intimidation, a spirit of intimidation this week. People just being frightened and intimidated by so many spirits. And when we think about this concept of ministering um, Jesus towards someone, there's a moment normally where you feel, will I know what to say? And then that thought can so quickly become so overwhelming and anxiousness and, and uncertainty just sets in that, I mean, you now just said it so well here in front, when, when you stand at a, at a place and, and I felt, I had a similar experience there. I, I, um, when I got to the place, we didn't know where everyone was gathering here in Ops and, and we just started driving and we got there. And um, when I got out of the car, Reno was there and a whole lot of people were there, but they were already sent out to, two by two into the street. And, um, and I was the only one there. And um, so, um, and Pauline and there were some that looked after the children there. And I thought, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna st stop walking, see who I find. So as I walked and I turned the corner, there was a homeless guy that, that just joined me on the road and I joined him and we started talking and I chatted with him and it was the easiest thing to just, you know, where are you going, you know, type, type conversation and we strolled all the way out the, the corner and it, it turned there and, and, um, and then he said, well, I'm this way and I don't know why, but I felt, okay, I'm not going that way, I'm, I'm going this way. <laughs> so he, he went on his way and I turned left and as I turned left, something happened. I felt, why were you not able 
to start a conversation about Jesus. And it wasn't, it wasn't the type of question that made me feel, God, I want to submit and be better, teach me. It was the type of question that made me feel I'm unqualified and I'm unfit for this. And I stood there and I said, Lord, I, I responded to the, to the question as if it was God speaking. Because I, I said, Lord, next time when I walk with someone, show me what would you like me to do. But I'm going to enjoy this day with you. I'm going to walk around and just enjoy being with you with this. And uh, the next moment, the guy came back to me. So he was already halfway up the street. He turned around, he came back to me, and he stood by me, and he said, Will you please buy me a bread? And, uh, and in the meantime, I had this word in my heart saying, I could have asked him, Do you pray? Because I didn't have a card, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, he's, and he said, and I said, I lit nothing with me, but I want to ask you a question. Do you pray? And that was the beginning of that conversation. And why I'm sharing this with you is, whenever we are in a space where we are busy walking with God, there comes a point in time where some spirits start ministering something. And if you are not attentive, there is a very real threat to your walking with God. And it shakes you to a halt. Now, normally there's, there's a few extremes when we think about following God. We are either very actively following Him, quiet times going well, prayer life's going well, relationships are going well. You, even in those relationships that you feel are not going so well, you, you sense a peace. There's something of a God empowering that happens. But then there's times where you feel, I'm passive, I'm complacent, something is not right. I don't sense and I don't feel the Holy Spirit working with me aligned with this thing. Now, this void that we are speaking into is that void exactly between those two thoughts. Because when we are either walking actively following God, that's one thing, or when we are being accused and we are dealing with emotions, that's one thing. But there's normally a moment in time when we are confronted by some Thing or someone or some spirit and this morning we want to speak into that that's why we are speaking into a void this morning and we are trusting our father to teach us what do we do when we are sitting in that space where we are experiencing that void what do we do now the interesting the interesting thing is I, I felt I felt the Holy Spirit lead me to the original attack so I want you to, if you have your Bible with you, please open at Genesis 3. If you have your phone, and as a last resort, we have it on the board as well. <laughs> but I want that you, if you have anything here, open it there, because I, I want you to notice something. Are you guys there? Will you just wave at me if you found it? If, if there's someone that's battling, will you also wave? And someone next to you can help you. Okay, are we ready? Okay, let's read. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God has made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took off its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. So I want you to think about this. We are speaking about walking with God and how we walk with God, and sometimes there's this invitation. 
It's interesting, we're going to strip away some of the details, we're going to see what changed. Because the interesting thing about the attack of the enemy is not much changed. We're still falling for the same attack. It still looks exactly the same. Look at this. In our lives, when we are walking with God on the next slide. So, here's us walking with God, intentionally wanting to follow Him. And here's a question. A crafty, well-formulated question from the enemy saying, did God actually say? Now, for each one of us, that, that might look different. It might look in, in whatever way. But in some way or form, you get confronted with something that you're doing or not doing, in some way intimidated, in some way accused, in some way challenged, in some way just, just a thought being planted, did God really say? Now look at what was, what was Eve's immediate res response was, but, but God said. So there was a confrontation. There was a response by Eve saying, but God said. There was a word. And you know what? In our lives, even sometimes, we also feel that same way. We feel there's a confrontation, but the experience of what God had said is it's still so real and, and so... We, we are just so aware still about it that we can easily say, but, but God did say. Now listen to the... Look at, look at what happens next. He said, but the serpent said. So now, here's a conversation happening. Now listen to this. Did God say? God said. The serpent responded. But look at what he does in verse 5. He speaks on God's behalf. So, in verse 4 he says, But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Now look at verse 5. For God knows that when you eat, now I don't want to. I don't want us to be to be caught in the detail of what specifically happened here. I want us to see a tendency. It's interesting how when we get confronted by the enemy and we respond from a place of what God said, and he respond saying whatever, whatever type of intimidation. Normally, there's a time where there's a there's a vulnerable value or a vulnerable truth that's struck by the enemy in your heart. The moment we engage in conversation with him, he finds a way to speak into something that's vulnerable to you. But look at what he does. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't keep on motivating her just from his own accord. He says, for God knows. So he starts speaking on behalf of God. And then in verse 6, The conviction came. The woman saw, she took its fruit, and then she didn't only were convinced, but she responded. She also thought, she. I want us to make a mental note of this. Because in our own lives, when we get confronted by the enemy, for us to understand his strategy makes a lot of sense. Because the moments when you are in your car, driving, when you are sitting behind your computer, when you are sitting late at night, when you are sitting early mornings, when you are sitting wherever, normally there is a time where there is a confrontation. You respond with something you have heard at some stage. There is a different response and all of a sudden there is a, there's a flooding of thoughts and a flooding of emotions and a flooding of experiences and, and before you know it you have actually become convinced. And convicted to the point where you feel, okay, I'm responding from this now. And you start, you start acting. Now this morning, we are trusting God to teach us what to do in the void moments. So that we can be continually filled instead of falling for those. Before we go on, I want you to think. When you receive a crafty invitation from the enemy. How long... Do you actually give yourself time to consider what's going on? And I'm asking this question very specifically because we don't even know that we spend less time considering what's actually busy happening than what we do following it 
and then try to deal with the consequences. Because the moment you've engaged with, um, with that invitation, and there's a conversation between you and this enemy, whatever this enemy is, the moment that happens, there's, a, there's a, an opinion that's shown, and there's a response that happens. But I want us to stop for a moment and say, how do we, how do we stop this? And firstly, we need to speak into this void. The moment there's a confrontation you have, there has to be alarm bells that goes off in us saying, this is a crucial moment. Because whatever I do from here, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be an outflow. How much time do we spend there? Now, I want us to ask ourselves another question. With regards to speaking into the void on the next slide and, and being maintained continually full, think about that moment you sit in the car or you sit at house and you're in the house and you're alone and, and there's this confrontation. If, if there's an alarm bell that goes off saying this is that crucial moment we spoke about, this is that moment that I should not just let, let pass. Why, what for, who for, what is the reason that I want to be full in that month? It's an, it's an extremely important question to ask yourself because in that moment there's a tension and that tension almost forces you into a decision. But I want us to, as we consider that moment, just stand still for a moment and we're going to go to our primary scripture today. It's in Ephesians 5. Those of you that want to join me there in your, in your Bibles, you're more than welcome to, to go there. Ephesians 5, verse 15. Are we there? Okay, you guys are now very deep in thought and I know it's of, of my, my responsibility, or my thing that I invited you to, to to think hard. I'm, I'm thankful that you do. But stay with me. Ephesians 5 verse 15. It says, Look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is the debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So I want us to think about what we just read in Genesis and how the enemy attacks us. And I want us to think about Ephesians 5 verse 15 saying, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise. In that specific moment when those alarm bells go off thinking this is a crucial time, I have to think this is the time when I need to think how I'm going to walk. Am I going to walk like someone wise or am I going to walk like someone unwise? The first statement we find here is in verse 16. Make the best use of the time. Make the best use of the time. We're going to come to the practical part of this now. I just want us to see a few key points and then we can take it from there. Make the best use of the time. The second thing we see here in verse 17 is therefore do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand the will of our Father. The third thing we find in this piece of scripture is be, be filled. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Be continually filled. In verse 19 we see there's an addressing that happens. Addressing one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Now from a place of being filled by the Holy Spirit, when we think about this concept of addressing, it will either be someone or something. Within the context of you being in a space where you are being attacked by the enemy, 
to address him is what we are speaking about here. Address it. Address the person. Address him. Then lastly, giving thanks always and for everything. This speaks about our heart posture. To God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be thankful to our Father. Now practically, I want us to speak about the how. Now with every how, there's a hurdle or there's a potential challenge that we might face as we pray through these things. In the moment where that potential void is happening, I want us to pray, how do I make the best use of this time? What is the alternative? The alternative is that I'm in the moment not intentional about the decision that I'm making. What we need to understand is you are making a decision right there. Whether you know what decision you're making or not, it's going to be up to you. If you're going to be intentional about discerning what, how, am I, how do I make the best use of this time, then this decision might be aligned with what God said. But if I don't, I'm not going to be intentional about the decision that I'm making. The second one is, Father, what is your perspective and your will? We pray that. Right in that moment, Father, what is your will? What is your perspective? What do you see while I'm in this experience where I'm busy being confronted? What is the alternative? The alternative, and I don't know how it works for you, I'll just share how it works for me. When I'm confronted with something and I'm not deliberate in making a decision, there's, a, there's an emotional response in my heart where I start feeling that I'm being drawn into a space where I don't want to be. And when I don't ask Father, what is your will? What is your instruction? What are you? What is your perspective? I start dealing with my own emotions. I start dealing with my own thoughts. And before I know it, what I'm praying after that is I'm literally praying only through the thoughts that I have just generated through this attack. And this, the, the image that I saw was almost an enemy just throwing like a, a bone between dogs and, and then and then there they go. It's, it's as if the enemy can just throw an attack at me and at us in that space, in that void. And because we are not intentional, we are not serious and we do not ask Father what is your will, we get caught up in our own emotions. And from there, we start to try and pray through the one after the next emotion and challenge that we all experience. And that thing doesn't resolve. It, it's like a bottomless pit. It, it's like, if you do not stop that cycle, that will keep you busy. And I know, because this is something I felt in my heart specifically for this morning, that there are many of us this morning that is extremely fatigued because of this cycle that's been running in us. Not only for this week, but for quite a while now. Listen, the enemy is not even there anymore. He threw that on you and you took care of that on your own. He left and he can go attack someone else. We need to stop the cycle by not being so attentive and so focused on dealing with our emotions. Simply saying, Father, what is your will? You speak. Speak. And then listen. There was a time when, when, um, when God started the process of healing me from pornography specifically. There was a time when I, when I worked because my work was on a computer. So, and, and because it was in a, in, in a time when, when we, um, we had a family business, we were working from home at a, at a point. And there was a time when I sat with my hands on the table, literally like this. And I said, I will not do or think anything until you speak, Father. Because the attack and the and the, the, the um, confrontation was so tailored that my emotions just wanted to spin. 
And that's a battle we lose every time. We cannot fight with ourselves internally. There's no hope in that. We can't win that battle. Somewhere you fall. You will fall. Until we get to a place where we say, Father, what did you say? And then it shifts. After we pray, Father, what is your will? We ask, will you fill me anew with your spirit? In, in, and we see that in, in sequence, but we see that in verse, verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine. We're not speaking about the negative part now. There's a beautiful negative positive tendency in the scripture. But for the sake of today, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we say, Father, what is your will? What we pray next, Father, empower me. Now I have direction. I have purpose. I have vision. Father, now I need your empowering. Because I know this is not from me. I don't have the ability to pursue this. I need you to empower me and I need to, I need, I'm asking you, Father, please fill me anew with your spirit. Empower me so I'm able to walk out this what you just revealed. It's as if God gives you an image, he gives you a perspective, and then he gives you the strength to pursue. Does it make sense? You guys with me? Listen to this. After that, address one another. If you still feel a sense of an opposing spirit or an opposing person or whatever in the room or wherever or it might be positive it might be in a space where you are in a place like where you've got ministered to someone or whatever but in this context specifically we are speaking about this void space so from there address it if you at that stage feel that you are still hearing that that enemy is still trying to oppose address it why? Why do we have the ability then? Because we have submitted ourselves to the time of the Father. Because we've submitted ourselves to His will. Because we've submitted ourselves to His infilling and His empowering. So when we now address, we address aligned with His purposes and His will. We do not do it from our own accord. And then we do it from His authority. Lastly, be thankful for everything. Everything. Because everything that you just went through started to stir something in you that made you more like it. As prayer points this morning. Before we go there, sorry. On the how, I want, I need, I just feel that is good. I like this to me. With regards to addressing those around you, if you do not address those around you from those places that we've just set up, you are a victim and a hostage of it. If you are not the one addressing, you are being addressed. If you do not address, you are the hostage. Again, listen carefully. I'm not saying from your own accord, from your own thoughts, from your own emotions, from whatever we've now said. I'm confronted. I'm listening to what I'm confronted about. I'm submitting myself. Father, how do I make the best use of this time? How do I submit myself under your will? Father, please fill me and empower me with the Holy Spirit so that I can speak and start speaking. If it's confession, confess. If it's forgiveness, forgive. Whatever that looks like. And then lastly, be thankful. Be thankful towards the Father because He knows you. He knows what you need. He knows where you are at. He knows what you are going through. He knows what He's busy doing. He is the author. He is the king. He is the ruler. And this morning, I want us to pray. I want us to pray through this. But the first question we need to ask ourselves is, am, am I really walking with God? And for some of us here, there's not been a time yet where you actually felt I, I've made a deliberate decision to follow God. And if that is you, please come pray with us afterwards. Don't let this time go by. Secondly, I want us to pray, Father, how do I make the best use of the time? I actually, when I made the notes, I wrote my time. How do, I make the, how do I make the most 
was the best use of my time. And I, I just, I just, after I wrote all the notes, I felt that something is still not right, and I went back, and then I said, it's not my time. It says their time. It's not your time. It's his time. This is not my life. This is his life. There's, there's a posture in our hearts that God wants to communicate to us saying, I know you are going to go through hardships and it's going to be extremely confronting. But pray through this. How do I make the best use of the time? Father, what is your perspective and your will? Ask to be filled in you with the Holy Spirit and address those around you. Whether that's a spirit, whether that's a person, or whether that's someone that's, that you are ministering unto. It, it can be whatever, whatever type, but start speaking from the filling of the Holy Spirit, from His empowering. And then lastly, be thankful towards the Father. Now it's interesting, when I prayed through this, personally, um, and, and this, is, this is, I don't know, it's special to see it like that, but um, when you are sitting in your car, or when you are driving somewhere, or when you are being confronted by someone, I can give you my word, from my perspective, this is not the first six things that's going to come up in your mind. Because when we are confronted, we are normally confronted with something that's very real to us, and very dear to us. And because it's crafty, remember, the enemy is not throwing 60 um, confrontational thoughts out, it's very crafty. It's as, it's as if he has good perspective on what it is that will get you to not, your first thought is not going to be, how do I submit to God better in this? Your first thought is going to be, how do I manage or how am I going to stand against this or whatever? And then we've set up all these very interesting frameworks and stuff around us, like whenever this happens, then I call that person, or then I call that person, or then I just get out of the room, or I just get, and there's a place for that, there's a thing, thing from temptation or whatever, there's a space. But sometimes, and I believe, especially today, God wants to set us free from specific things, very personally. So for me, when that was the one thing that stood out, the, the time thing, but then the, the thing that I had got 2.4 fairly easily as I now work through this sermon, but then to address to address the things around you, whether it's a person, whether it's a spirit, whether it's whatever, that's that's a different that's a different experience. But from the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that's possible. So I want you to look at those six things, and we're going to briefly consider, Father, what what do we pray through this morning? Where am I at with regards to how the enemy strategy is currently functioning in my life? Where am I at? Because I can tell you this, if we do not conquer with Him the first three points, and I need you to listen very carefully to me now, if we do not conquer with Him the first three points, we will be partnering with a different spirit. Are you with me? That's very serious. If we do not get it right to submit and yield our perspective and our will to the Father. We are going to seek for an empowering to do something. But we will seek for empowering from a different spirit. And that spirit would have already deceived us somewhere between the, between the first and the second point. When we start praying, we have the ability to by grace sometimes pray aligned with God's will. And He can do that. God can do anything. But the majority of the time when we are confronted, we've already by then made a bit of a decision in a direction. And if we made that decision in line with our emotions, we are in trouble. And then the outflow is going to be there. Exactly like what happened with Eve. The moment the, moment the conviction set in, the fruit is good, it's fine to eat, I'm doubting whether what God said is true, then she didn't only eat herself, but she started sharing. We were meant to share. We will always share. But what we're going to share, we need to be very attentive about. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to go into a time of prayer. So um, we will be in front if you want to pray with someone. You're also welcome to turn to the person next to you. But I want us to see where in my life can I discern, am I currently, and turn it towards God and say, Follow, show me.
And go, if, if you are in a place where you feel, I've missed the Father's will, I don't really, I've not really asked the Father what is His will, then go back. Go back a step. Go back a step saying, Father, how do I make the best use of the time? Is it now? Is it at, at the house? Is it whenever? Where do you want me to address this? Start, start a step back and say, okay, we are taking it deliberate now. Are you with me? Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you this morning that you give us such practical um, guidance and assistance as to how we love you, we are loved by you, and we respond to you in a time as this. Father, we are extremely confronted by so many different spirits, by so many different things, and we are in such a desperate need, Father, to, to be obedient to you and be saved by you. And Father, often we, we have all of these frameworks and things in our minds that we think is going to help us, Lord, but you set out in Scripture so many times, Lord, what, what works. And Father, this morning we know it's not a recipe or a step-by-step -step guide, Father, but as we look at these principles, we just want to align our hearts. Holy Spirit, in this time, you, you know exactly where each one of us is. You know exactly what we are going through. Lord, we pray that by your grace you would show us, Lord, where, where are we? What are we busy with? And if we did, Lord, where did we miss you? Where did we maybe partner with a different spirit? Where did we maybe get the will, my will, or the will of those around me, or someone else's will, the enemy's will? Father, we, we pray that for every single one of us that feels overwhelmed by the emotions that they are currently experiencing, that, that you would just hold them, you would just love them, and by your grace, Lord, you would just keep them and show them the light on their feet. And as we now pray, Father, I, I thank you that you are with us, that you guide us very specifically. Thank you for listening. Remember that our sermon audio and videos are also available on Shofar TV. Go to www.shofaronline.tv to download and share.